in motion the cannon is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to this latest oh. episode of Really Dicey. Happy May the 4th to everyone. Hopefully this video will be edited and out in time. Uh, so obviously today we're going to talk about Star Wars, but not just the typical um, stuff. Actually, we're going to go dig a little bit deeper. Um, you know, canons are very... Uh, a uh, very heated topic with fans nowadays with Star Wars. Uh, ever since uh, um, Disney had decided to put a kibosh on the canon of the, the novels that have come out after Star Wars, the Drawn yeah. Trilogy and all those, which is a shame because I loved, I enjoyed Drawn Trilogy growing up. Of course, yeah. Leia, Shadow of the Empire, all those were fantastic books. And I'm still puzzled by the decision. Um, so, uh, so many of you game masters out there, or new and old, or you know, probably are looking to play pretty much a lot of the old saga, old saga, the Skywalker saga, as it's called. Um, yes. uh, but uh, we're gonna go talk about other things that may interest game masters to try out, other alternate storylines that they may mine for information. So sure. at this point, I'm gonna pass the baton to Matt. And he's going to share us some things that <laughs> may interest you. So, uh, yeah, the canon is just getting crazy. Um, you may not like it. You may like bits of it. You may love all of it. Even then, you know, just recently, Disney has retconned the rule of two, for instance, the Sith rule of two. They've changed the meaning of that. They've retconned the past of Luke Skywalker, uh, they apparently are bringing, the, you know, as he shows up in, in Last Jedi, he's, you know, he's been married before and he has a, a child. So they're trying to, it, it's funny that um, they wiped away the, uh, the expanded universe and then they just keep picking bits of it back up again. <laughs> yeah. And they brought back Drawn for um, yep. uh, Rebels. So was exactly, Rebels. exactly. And they keep picking up bits of plots, and they keep picking up characters and all sorts of things. But yes, yeah. there are a lot of things out there. Uh, one of the most fascinating things I just recently found was this magazine. This is Fantastic Films. This is a magazine, a uh, quite old magazine. This was written after um, Empire Strikes Back, but before... Revenge of the Jedi, as they were still calling it then. So there were three years to go before we get the, they got the answers. And the author of this article just um, speculates on all sorts of crazy stuff that's going to happen. You know, he says, he'll explain the Clone Wars. Uh, he thought there were going to be a lot more clones <laughs> and a lot more Skywalkers. <laughs> um, you know, he speculated that maybe Boba Fett was going to be Anakin Skywalker. And he goes through all sorts of hoops trying to figure out how um, Obi-Wan could have been telling the truth and Vader was lying. Cause you know, he had the audacity to believe the good guy and not the bad guy. The fool. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so the, the article gets a little needlessly messianic in places, but uh, it's, it's really fascinating. It gives a good glimpse of um, not only what they were thinking of, you know, how they were thinking back then, but uh, different ways the, the the series could have gone. He talks about uh, Han Solo making a deal with Jabba the Hutt and at the last minute bringing in a pirate fleet to fight the Empire over Coruscant. That would have been really cool. Yeah, wouldn't it? <laughs> but mm. Star Wars, um, the, you know, larger Star Wars has always had stuff like that there's the star wars infinity comics here's one of these for each movie i can't seem to find uh my empire strikes back but i've got new hope and return of the jedi and uh in each case uh they take they take a jumping off point and then follow it through you know so the first one's what if luke hadn't destroyed the death star and the story spins out from there um in Empire, this, uh, Empire Strikes Back, it's what if Han hadn't reached Luke in time and Luke dies in his arms and the story spins out from there. They're really fascinating. There's also things like, um, there's a YouTube channel called Star Wars Theory, which is a lot of news and um, 
and things about Star Wars, but they also, he has a whole, so, a whole line of videos that are just what if, what if all sorts of crazy things. You know, what if Luke had decided to take Vader up on his, on his, uh, on his offer? Join me and together we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. And Luke says, okay. <laughs> and then, they, you know, <laughs> it plays out from there. And uh, they're really well thought out. And they're pretty neat. And um, I think the message for game masters is that, you know, canon is this crazy, wild, <laughs> well, it's actually, it's the, I'm sorry, it's not that at all. Canon takes all these crazy possibilities and nails them down into the way it's supposed to be and um as as yoda says always in motion is the future yes well always in motion is canon they keep retconning things so my advice to to game masters and the player groups is damn the canon full speed ahead you know, mm. change the canon if you want to uh, change different things that have happened i think uh, what's only if you want to though but the, the important thing is um, the important thing in any adaptation is the spirit of the story, not, not I think, the details. I think that, you know, the spirit's more important. And, you know, a, um, a tenet of, of good gaming is, is you want your players to be the heroes. Well, sometimes that can be a little difficult when you're doing a movie and there's already these great heroes. So sometimes you have to get those heroes out of the way. You know, I ran a game and... Um, I just took out the heroes. I took out Luke and Leia and, and, and um, Han Solo, and they just weren't there. And my players filled those roles. And we played out the story from there. It was great. Um, you know, even if you're, even if you're, you're telling a story, um, you know, far removed from the action, or you're doing like a Rogue One, right? So you've kind of taken your players and you've, you've put them into the story in the, in, in the back scenes and everything. I think, um, I think it's a lot more fun um, for your players if they don't assume that the play the 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 story's already already written. I mean, if you if your players already know that, however they mess up their mission, and the Death Star is going to get blown up and the Empire is going to come crumbling down, it might remove some of the dramatic tension. So, you know, my advice would be from wherever you start your story. That's the present, and the future is always in motion, as, Luke, as, as Yoda would say. The, the future isn't written, so your players can mm. have some effect on what's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Manny? Oh, I think that's great. I think um, some of the best games I've, I've game mastered was where we take out the main cast of a story that's well-known. Uh, for example, Fellowship of the Ring. Um, there was a, st a story where they failed their mission. Oops, uh, they got captured by orcs and we don't know what happened to them. So there's a new band of heroes to come about and they're trying to pick up where they left off. And so it's a very fun uh, exploring alternate endings to popular stories that I think are a lot of fun to explore. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it, it, you can, there are, there's so much potential in the Star Trek universe, uh, Star Wars universe. <clears throat> heresy <laughs> in the, in the <laughs> oh no you got me Excellent. I'm a Trekkie you got me <laughs> <laughs> well everyone I hope uh, you enjoyed the segment and I hope that when you're playing Star Wars that despite uh, what's happening on on film on the silver screen that you're still having enjoying the, the lore of it at least the main spirit of it and uh, yes be the four be with you. Have a great day.